Welcome to Houdini battle number four. <laughs> My name is Deborah Isaac. I'm a Houdini educator. I teach at Drexel University. I'm also the founder of Houdini School launching very, very soon. I also co-organize LA Hug. Um, with me is uh, Justin Dykhaus, our commentator, one of our commentators. He's a Houdini generalist working at Magnopus, a uh, VR powerhouse in Los Angeles, working on many really exciting projects. We also have Remy Pierre. He's currently a Houdini pipeline TD at Digital Domain, Vancouver, focusing on CFX. He's also worked at uh, Method Studios and Image Engine. So now it's time to introduce our players. Hey, our players, we have Dave Stewart. Dave is based in Seattle. He's a CG artist currently working on commercial effects and um, tinkering endlessly with small scale flip sim setups. We then have Nick DeBoer. Did I say that right, I hope? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick is a freelance motion designer and 3D artist. He previously worked at Animal Logic and Rising Sun Pictures and now has his own studio. And all of these guys' links are in our meetup, so please check them out. Next, we have John Kuntz. He is a Houdini enthusiast, artist, educator, focusing on dynamic simulations. He's taught at the Art University in San Francisco. Um, and also at SIGGRAPH. He's over 10 years experience working in feature films and commercials. Chris Rutledge is joining us from Twitch. Unfortunately, he couldn't join our little inner studio here um, where we're streaming, but um, he is an animator who can be found on freelancing on commercials and using Houdini to make many disturbing things on his own time. Some of his most upsetting creations you can find on Adult Swim or Loaf.Zone. Um, okay, so everybody, I need... Okay, look, we've got 58 viewers on our Twitch stream. Ooh. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Okay. I'm, so... My mom might be one of those. <laughs> I think all of you are one of those. Um, so I'm going to need... Random seeds. I need two random seeds. Two random seeds. I'm really nervous of what the theme is going to be today, you guys. <laughs> oh, we got a 53. We got a 53. Okay. Okay. I love how uh, Peter's always first. Peter's always first to put the numbers in. Okay, you guys? So we, we know who to blame. Okay. So I'm going to go to my roll the die page. And... Sorry, one second. You guys aren't seeing that. The stream it takes a little bit of time to update. Just want to make sure we're seeing my. There we go. Okay. So, oh my word. First, let's let's talk about what these things are. So, um. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we, it is terrifying. Our, our players are, are terrified. I, I, uh, I do apologize. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got microorganism, shoe, theme park ride, music instrument, portal. Um, and then our themes, our themes are... Uh, brutalism, uh, which is a really cool uh, form of architecture. Aztec, I'm sorry, you guys. I hope you don't get that one. Alien, high tech, and Art Nouveau. Okay, so we have a 53. I'll put that in the themes. And we have a very long number that I will copy and paste. <laughs> and I will roll the die. There we go. This might take a little, this might take up to 50 frames. It's kind of slow. Oh, 
I hope it's not Aztec, even though I, I kind of want it to be Aztec. <laughs> what is it going to be? The players' lives will change based on the result of this. Alien! Alien is the theme! Okay, not bad. Alien, that's not bad, right? Alien musical instrument, that'd be alright. <laughs> oh, that would have been wild. And, 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 oh no! Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. It's in between. Remy, Remy and Justin. <laughs> what, what do I do? What do we do? I need one of you to call it. This has never happened before! Musical instrument, alien musical instrument. Okay, music. Well, what do, what do the players would prefer? They would prefer to make a shoe or a musical instrument. Yeah, I guess player's choice. Instrument? I, I think the instrument is a much, I mean, even though that was part last time, last, that was a theme last time too, right? But no, the... I, it, well, we, it didn't get picked. Uh, if it was, oh, I'm right, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so true, uh, we ended up with a guitar last time, so... Oh, right, right, right. Oh, but that, was that wasn't a theme. Oh, oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't, rocket, that wasn't a theme. Was yeah, the theme. you're right. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Punk rocket. That's right. Okay, so <laughs> alien music instrument, you guys. Alien music instrument. All right. Oh, All right, go no, for it, guys. No audio for... Um, okay, hold on a second. So, David, let me know if it's coming through in a sec. And we are going for it everybody mark your timers okay mine is marked and go on your mark set and go and they're off <laughs> they're off <laughs> wow oh my god something something like a uh, theremin Maybe. Yeah, Theremin was the first one that popped in my mind. So, uh, yeah, so we have this new. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a bit similar to the previous one. I'm just wondering what uh, our uh, new contestants are going to do this time. The uh, alien modifier on the front should uh, add some some fun things. It's, hopefully, they're going to let their imaginations run a little bit wild with that one. I don't know what's going on here. This is a bit of a uh, so I can see device. that Nick is already going for <laughs> Let's it. Let's go. <laughs> already made a spear. I don't know if you can me, but I'm actually uh, starting something. And, uh, <laughs> first note. <laughs> I'm just doing first, research. First note. Looking at these alien guitars. There you go. Guitars. It's already. Right. It's already, it's already right. Right. Alien, there you go. Uh, <laughs> mashup right here. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see what goes with John Coots. We should tell Chris that we can't see his screen. Oh yeah, it's like off to the side, I think. Let me make sure everything's is. working on the technical side over here. Uh, he's very way for us to contact him. Ooh, these are really cool musical instruments, you see. We <laughs> All right. We, forgot. we got some... I don't know. Oh, I believe like that's the one. infamous Badger Theremin. Go, go, go. Theremin? Yeah. <laughs> Oh so God. I'm glad that we're seeing some uh, more some like reference gathering. We always like to see that here. Um, the first step of any well-executed artistic vision. <laughs> the hoses. And the vision. Hoses. So I'm, I'm just looking at pictures of aliens. Of <laughs> <laughs> Let me look, look at the theremin. I love the, uh, I don't know what this is. Unless you're Nick, sort of... and then you just jump right it's in. It's got the main <laughs> antenna. These things are pretty cool. The automaton. Cosmic sound. And All let's right. see. Who should we look at first? Because I guess we should give Nick a little bit, a, a bit of time to, to build something. I set a timer yes, here at the bottom of my screen. This um, is what I really wish I had. What I'm doing right uh, now is over at the Houdini Music Houdini Tool School. School. Style, then. Um, I, which, music with this I think I'll put a link up earlier. Some, uh, I don't know what we'll kind of search you did, but... Is it just the music? Weird musical instruments. It could be weird instruments or world instruments. I see very few things that I recognize what they are. Oh, that's yeah. a museum. You didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> if you make the marble machine, so that would be amazing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen that. So I don't know if it's with the cat. Oh, I think I have seen that. It, it, it throws marbles against like a wood uh, resonating body to kind of make the, the beats and stuff exactly. like that. Yeah. Very cool. That's pretty really cool. I, I hope that our contestants have some experience in uh, with musical instruments too. 
well, we know that the ETH must have it every <laughs> musical instrument behind it. So ah, I do <laughs> know. Raises the stakes a bit, but there really you go. There he is. Oh, that's cool. Red, the, what are you the looking guitar. at right now? Sorry. Uh, we are looking at Dave. Just is a reference gathering. Yeah, I think these are pretty cool. The bronze okay. kind of design. Some very interesting Jeez, bronze in there. A lot to sort of choose from. Let me yeah. maybe just search. You can't mute? Oh no. Yeah, sorry. Do you want me to mute my mic on my, on uh, on on your end? Could you do that? Yeah, I can mute it on the uh, light. Sorry. Thank you light very much. Stream. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah of course. course. I think Deb is attending to uh, some of the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we have a look at uh, someone else? Yeah. Then it looks like Dave is ready to ready to start laying down notes. So let's give him a little rest, and we'll see what else. Yeah. So maybe should, uh, I think John is still looking for a reference as well. Uh, he's looking for CDJ. It's a MIDI. I think it's a MIDI player. Oh, it's CDJ, nice. that's like a, sort of like a turntable uh, for uh, oh, cool. compact discs, so you can use it to, to disc track it with. Oh, the turntable, okay. That now, I, kind of... I'm, I'm looking actually at Chris's screen, and he's doing something kind of interesting. He's also already laid down a couple of notes, and in fact, it looks like he's starting to do something with volumes, even. So... I mean, if you're going to have uh, an alien figure, you probably want to have something organic. And if you want something organic, VDB really helps you for that. <laughs> it's true. So it's like a volume-based kind of thing. So instead of being a, a, two a two-dimensional representation like a pixel, it's actually a volumetric pixel. And so it's, it's an easy way to get sort of three dimensions going. Uh, straight away, sort of like an oversimplified version, but it's often used to create, like you say, smooth and organic shapes. And I think maybe he'll treat us to an alien uh, instrumentalist as well. So maybe we'll have it. <laughs> He's just going to do the scene in uh, Star Wars. <laughs> but I'm seeing that he's, he's kind of cheating. He's using his notes. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> you can tell they're his notes because they literally have a picture of his face on it. <laughs> I'm amazed with the fact that he has his face in his notes. I should do that as well. <laughs> now, which one of these did I make again? Oh, right, this one. Okay, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I don't know for what, what kind of thing he's going for. Although that's, that's him. It's always a bit weirdly shaped. Yeah, that's his style, so... True, yeah, we've seen his work on uh, Adult Swim, like Deb was saying at the outset, and uh, some other places, and he has kind of a weird sort of glitchy organic style. It's a, it's really, could be really off-putting, but it's also quite quite amusing. Quite amusing. Uh, should we have a look at uh, a Nick, maybe? I love it. Let's do that. All right. So over a Nick Denbor's screen... And for those of us, for those uh, audience members who want to follow along, we're looking at Nick DeVore's screen. And somehow he's using another I've never seen, the taper deformer. Oh, it's a, a Qlib uh, node. That's why I've probably never seen it. Uh, I think he's trying to build a, an alien face with, a, with a VD, some kind of VDB setup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think VDB would come up a few times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. So Qlib, uh, for those uh, following along at home, uh, are a set of uh, nodes uh, that are they're, uh, free to download, free to install, and free to use, um, and they extend the functionality of Houdini. Um, they're basically a tool set. I do not know who is um, the, the person or persons behind them, but I, I see them referenced a lot in terms of uh, behind the scenes work on visual effects and stuff like that. So Qlib, kind of like a specialized library. But uh, as with many things in Houdini made by users, the uh, there's uh, no charge involved in that. You can just kind of download it. And because it's Houdini, you get all access to all the nodes. So it's kind of like open source in a way. 
it is just like uh, Houdini Labs in a way. It's Houdini Labs before Houdini Labs because uh, QLib is older than that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it does add some, uh, some capabilities to Houdini. Sometimes it can get a bit too much. Like you end up having way too many nodes. Uh, that's what I, I've been feeling uh, the latest changes in Houdini. It's overwhelming. <laughs> the answer to the question, what if Houdini had some more nodes? <laughs> well, that's uh, what Houdini Labs is. <laughs> that's the trying to, to make some processes a bit easier to, uh, to use. Yeah, so he's going for an alien face. Probably uh, we can add the, the X-Files theme for the next time we do that. <laughs> <laughs> And he's put down a color node, so that's very, pretty basic, though, to add color to um, the attributes on each of the points of the geometry. So instead of it being a texture, or um, and that's a, a cool way to work because there's a lot you can do with those color. Uh, with to, Once you've assigned colors to points, there's a lot you can do with them in, in your workflow. It's a very handy part of it. So that's the color node there. That's why it has that eerie green shape uh, color. <laughs> Looks like a, a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. And he's doing some basic lighting, all right. Yeah, it looks like he's, uh, he's planning to, uh, to have a nice round of it. Uh, should we have a look at uh, John? Because we, I think we haven't uh, had a look. At yeah, by all yet. means. So looking at John Kuntz's screen now. All right. So, oh, wow, that's fast. I, I like his, uh, his setup for making a, a few uh, a few tiles. I don't know how you call that. Sorry. <laughs> the tiles, and it looks like some switches or sliders on there, I think. Yeah. I. It's too bad because he has his parameters in front of his setup, I think. But... I think he just jittered uh, points in uh, X and, and Y, uh, probably just in X, and so they're not uh, all on the on the same spot and just uh, use the copy to points, so just uh, instancing geometry on each of them. That's smart. It looks good directly. That's, uh, I like it. Yeah, that's like a way to get some, uh, some variety. Yeah. So let's see, Alien, will people try to do some gribble? as well <laughs> uh, to, to get the, the science fiction uh, look <laughs> yeah we had a we had a starship uh instrument last time i wonder if we have another one this time they might put some greebles on it <laughs> 33 minutes oh my oh we should, i think we should look at uh, dave's screen uh, it looks kind of cool what, uh, what he's doing all right Moving over to Dave Stewart's screen. Oh, what's this now? It looks like he's trying to make a planet, so probably Saturn or something like that. But at the same time, it looks like a, a sundial in a way. I'm not sure what he's going for. Yeah, and the rings are really interesting too. Because they do have some detail on it. It's difficult with the compression. but. <laughs> And now it looks like he's adding color to that. So it looks like he's trying to make it a terrestrial planet or an M-class planet for the Trekkies out there. <laughs> <laughs> and in order to get that sort of randomized color, um, one way is to drop down a color node like we saw on the other screen, but another way is to go into what's called a VOP or a VEX operators uh, network. And that's where uh, Dave is right now. And he's putting down a few nodes to kind of <clears throat> randomly generate patterns uh, that uh, or noise uh, generate patterns with noise that he can then assign different colors to and get kind of like green land on a blue ocean. Really interesting way to to get some variety and some visual interest early on. And that's why the nodes look a little bit different uh, than they do when you when they're in the when we're in the geometry context. Woohoo! <laughs> why is that displacement? <laughs> it it. It's, it's it's imploding. <laughs> there you go. Just adding some displacement to get some texture. 
I'm not too sure about the instrument. Yeah, maybe it's a record player planet? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't see what <laughs> All right. Should we have a look at um, a Chris, maybe? Right. Let's see what Chris is. That's neat looking. He's, uh, he's kind of like adding arms or legs or whatever it is. Uh, using the poker. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's, that's so fun. Look at that. He's got a draw cool. curve, and then he's using the draw curve to sort of place the VDBs. Yeah. Yeah. And he's ramping the VDBs. Uh, so it's creating a curve. He's ramping the scale of each point from the uh, root to tip to be able to have a nice, uh, smooth tip at the end. It looks really neat. Yeah. And uh, it's it's cool to put together a workflow where you get such immediate feedback on what you're oh, sort of yeah, creating right. as well. Boy, that's great. I can tell he's a real artist. <laughs> One can imagine that it wouldn't be too much of a leap to say that you could rig something like this and have it, you know, sort of flailing around and <laughs> doing crazy <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> just put this put it in the uh, in vellum. With uh, <laughs> there you go. Just put it in vellum and have it sort of twitch, twitch a bit, and then there's your alien. <laughs> it's all based on curves, right? So you could just put some bones with those curves. Very true. You have the curves with which you drew the the arms, so you just can place uh, tell the bones to instance themselves along that curve and then uh, attach themselves to the nearest geometry. That's a good point. I don't know what, for what kind of uh, instrument he's going for. Is it a microphone? <laughs> like some kind of microphone where you can't access it from... Pro it, it, it's a COVID microphone, so you can't... <laughs> <laughs> this is really interesting. It's fun. Uh, Chris's art style is one that... Um, it's, you, we, we don't see a ton of uh, in, the, in the Houdini world. I, I think of it more like a sort of motion graphics kind of uh, look or, or workflow, where it's, it's really about sort of immediate visual impact and, and fun. Um, and I, I love seeing that kind of thing. And I love seeing uh, people work that way in Houdini because it's a very capable package for that kind of thing. What is he doing? <laughs> I'm impressed. It, 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 it is a, a, a really nice way to, to work like that. You get quick feedback, quick uh, iterations on the composition. So, uh, yeah. So should we head back and have a look at Nick? I think so. So moving back over to Nick DeBoer's screen. <laughs> well, he's uh, definitely uh, going for the X Files alien. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll need a soundtrack for next time, Deb. Yes, we need some sound effects for sure. It's coming. It's in the works. <laughs> well, Remy, you've got your sound effects, right? <laughs> so he's uh, doing a, a VDB combine here, it seems like. Uh, sort of like a Boolean operation, but for volumes. <clears throat> Basically put two, two sh shapes together that are VDBs and then tell them how to interact, whether to add to each other or subtract, that kind of thing. He's using that to carve out a small piece of the, <laughs> of the alien face for a mouth there. It's just, uh, instead of using Boolean, he's using VDBs because it's just not as prone to crash and uh, to have bad geometry. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Uh, if you're just, if you don't need a really clean uh, geometry in the end, that's probably a better idea to go for VDB. If you need to rig and everything, 
well, probably don't. <laughs> it's going to be way slower to use. Or plan on some extensive retopologizing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Can uh, use the quadri mesh, a really good uh, uh, quadri mesh. Yeah, that's. It works only in Windows. That's too bad. <laughs> Where do they get the nerve? Where do they get the nerve for that? What about us Mac people? <laughs> I like it. I'm curious to see how he's going to tie it into the instrument. If maybe the, if this is the instrument, or if maybe the the alien is going to have an instrument in its mouth. <laughs> or maybe. or wherever you don't know it's an alien that might not even be in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Might be at the top of the head. Who knows? Um, should we have a look at uh, at John? Because we didn't have. I think we did for a while. We haven't seen him in a bit. Oh. Yeah, because it's. Wow. <laughs> what are we looking at? He's developing a whole alien club, I think. A whole club setup. <laughs> <laughs> Alien rave. I love it. Yeah, I think so. He's he's got a whole setup here. We've got the platters. We've got the uh, the the sliders for mixing, and then some kind of. Uh, I'm not horrible, sure what these uh, things are. Spiny shape. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's going to torture someone, but. <laughs> But he is, uh, he's got his reference up the whole time, I see. So that's that's cool. That's good to see. He probably yeah. knows what he's going for. We don't, <laughs> but he probably knows what he's doing. So I wonder if those are going to be like sort of uh, knobs that one like twiddles to change the EQ on the music or what those are going to be. Maybe that's the alien part. Really curious. I could be. So anybody's watching the files. I like it. It he has prepared these styles and it's like, oh, this object is going to go there. This object is going to go there. It's really procedural. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He laid out his uh, his grid <clears throat> first before uh, starting. Oh, he's bringing a L system. That could be fun. <laughs> this is where the alien part comes in. I didn't even know there were so many uh, presets for it, I gotta say. Yeah. That's pretty neat. A lot. Yeah. One of the best things about partaking in these, in these the battles and being a, a, a viewer is that you learn quite a bit. I, for example, I also had no idea that there were presets for the L system. I assumed it was the tree or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, that, and it's really important because the L system is really difficult to kind of grasp how to use. And having a few examples will help you uh, a lot. Twenty-three minutes left, everyone. Yeah, yeah I, I must agree. agree. I, I find, find it a little, little bit difficult, difficult too, but with a little bit of uh, concentration and some some good. Uh, Examples, that's a good way to kind of crack it. <laughs> I guess he's trying to find a, a shape he likes and will probably change, tweak it a little bit. Oh, it looks neat. <laughs> oh, we could do a whole battle just with L systems. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Should we have a look at someone else? Uh, I think we haven't seen, uh, haven't, haven't had a look at Dave for a while. All right, looking at Dave's screen, he of the uh, planetary instrument. All right, and something like that the to... <laughs> oh, yeah, Space Jam. Uh, something to, to note as we look at all these different users is uh, you'll see that everybody has their setup a little bit different. So it's kind of nice that you can kind of customize these different windows to work however you want to work, whatever the most important thing for you at that moment to look at if you want a, a really big 
a uh, scene view or you need a larger geometry spreadsheet to troubleshoot a problem, any of that kind of stuff. It's completely customizable. <coughs> He's got colors in there and everything. I don't know what is going for the waves around it. I don't know if it's just showing that it, there's a wave or that's part of the instrument. I think visually this is very strong so far, like color-wise. Yeah. yeah. I hope that it's sort of... Of course, of course it, it could be something, something that we've never seen before. It is an alien instrument, you know? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it could be something that we won't recognize. Kind of looks like a big lollipop in a way, but... <laughs> so now he's changing, I think, the maybe the... Whatever is driving the randomness or the noise on those uh, tubes that are wound around the planet on top of the rings, it seems to be changing those a little bit, adjusting them, getting just the right look there. And we can see that uh, Dave seems to uh, be uh, using a lot of VOPs. So we have the difference between VOPs and VEX. Uh, VOPs just generate VEX code, but uh, some people prefer to have these uh, visualization of the, the nodes uh, to be able to create the VEX, and some people prefer to write code. Uh, both are, of course, uh, uh, valid options. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think we should have a look at uh, Chris. He's making a trumpet. <laughs> oh boy, he's, 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 he's there's the instrument. instrument. Yeah, uh, there's an instrument and there's an alien playing it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> his style. He definitely has his style, he knows it and uh, he nails it. <laughs> and I think I see he's put down a pyro solver down there as well. So it looks like he's going to be doing some simulation too. So maybe we're going to see some some wind coming out of that alien trumpet. <laughs> Probably he's going to emit from the, the instrument. I'm looking forward to that one. Now, now I, I think, think he's going to have some uh, competition in the alien trumpet, trumpet department, department, though, because if we look <laughs> at Nick DeBoer's screen, we will see uh, ah. not not dissimilar. It's funny how they can't see each other, or they can, but I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, that is some good competition. Yeah, much, much more, more alien. alien. All right, we've got, got two people, people vying for the same basic idea. idea. Very interesting. <laughs> With diff really different uh, styles. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, Chris is going for simulation. Uh, that's usually a bit slow to do, uh, but you know, maybe he's not uh, going for a really complicated uh, simulation. Yeah, yeah, we, we do, we've seen uh, simulations, simulations here before uh, uh, during Houdini, Houdini battles, and it's best, uh, uh, as always, to keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> <laughs> You're just kind of letting yourself in for uh, a difficult, difficult time if you try to do anything fancy. That said, it can add quite a bit to the finished product, so it, it can be worth it. Definitely can. can add the little thing that the others don't. It doesn't look as procedural. Um, should we have a look at Nick? <laughs> I forgot what. Sorry, who? Uh, uh, Nick. We're having a look at Nick. Okay. That's doing also is an alien uh, with a. Uh, uh, what is it called again? Uh, I forgot the name of that instrument. Uh, well, in a way, it's not exactly the same one. <laughs> the tuba. There we go. It's an, inver it's an inverted tuba. It kind of looks like a snake in a way. <laughs> it's got like a tuba or, or, or a 
a sort of a long t- it looks more like one of those Tibetan horns that kind of winds back and forth before emerging. Oh, you're right. Very interesting. And, uh, yeah, how has he created that? I'd be interested to hear him uh, kind of talk about his thought process and, and how he made it, because it, it has kind of a nice shape to it. It looks low-poly friendly, so I think this would be a good game asset. <laughs> Well, we can see it because he's using a poly wire. Uh, there you go. <laughs> you just set a, a width attribute on the on the curve. Well, and uh, just use poly wire on it. It looks nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. good. Um, I, I am looking, looking forward to hearing. hearing the, the contestants, contestants kind of talk, talk about their design, design process a little bit. That's another thing I always look forward to with the battles. It's, it's fun to, to watch these unfold and watch their uh, technique, but it's, it's it's also fun to be able to hear what's sort of on their minds. Oh, I, I just noticed that uh, he's the first contestant I see to use the um, high uh, light, uh, the, the good lighting settings in the viewport, but uh, that's why he's having some kind of uh, shadow. Oh, yeah, yeah sure, sure enough. enough. And that's uh, what I was talking about in the previous battle. To, you can get good enough reflections and things like that in it. Uh, probably that would be useful for the instruments, for example, if you can get a cheap uh, reflection. Does, Does it extend, extend to getting, getting uh, like, like a specular, specular highlights and that kind of stuff, stuff too, so we can get kind of a metallic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember just making uh, something, uh, just putting a, a, a basic metal or gold. I think I just put a basic gold on a, on an object, and it was looking like, you know, cheap gold. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, so some good, good uh, basic... Um, viewport renders. Good, Good thing to have in your corner when time is tight, like, like in these battles, but also sometimes in client work. Every minute counts. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, take a look at John's screen. I'm curious to see if he's brought this all together into an instrument. It looks like he's definitely getting there. Wow. And uh, here again, you can see the sort of the variety of the, of the setups. John's got like a very large network view, and then he has the parameters uh, kind of like over that. Uh, and then he has a smaller uh, smaller scene view. It just kind of depends on how one likes to work or what task you have in front of yourself. Of course, he chooses, chooses this time to have the less interesting stuff on the screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ah, there we are. All right. So we're seeing... That's, That's a little detail, detail there. It is. I think this, this is really neat. That L system is kind of like, I don't know, it's like a robot or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get some light uh, too. It and it and duplicated it. Yeah. Might, Might be, be a mirror stop or something. Or something. And, and he's, he's got, got some, some lighting going on as well. This is nice. Ah, he's like he's going to, to use uh, Red, Redshift, which is a third party renderer that uses the GPU. So it's probably going to have really quick uh, renders. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> and it, it keeps going back to Nick. I'm not able to s switch. To John. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely, lovely times. No, it's okay. Just uh, do you, you guys do your thing. We're good. I'm just looking at the lighting he's doing. Uh, he's just putting in the real light. And... Oh, I oh, see. Yeah. yeah. Really Here we go. Really fast uh, to render. Nice, nice strong key, key light, light there to give us some dramatic, dramatic shadows. Well, I like it. Yeah. Oh, we have only have twelve minutes left. He's, he's already into lighting. I think he's in. I think he's in good shape. Oh yeah, definitely. It needs to be seen how the alien theme is going to be tied into this. Maybe that's going to be that that L system that he was that he was creating. 
But uh, definitely a cool look. We need procedural look. You know, yeah. I mean, you could make a music visualizer out of this. It's very cool. <laughs> Have the triangles go up and down with the music. <laughs> Uh, should we have a look at uh, Dave? Looks like he has uh, something really cool uh, going on. Ah, he's, he's added the shadows as well. <laughs> but, and see, adds, uh, it adds. It does add uh, visually what's up to what's happening. <laughs> I like the pastel colors he has. Yeah. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than no lighting at all. I don't know if his scene is a bit slow or if it's just Twitch that's a bit slow uh, to look at. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's actually animated, so. Oh, animation. oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's got, got a chop net, net down there. there. Oh, oh, here, here we, we go. go, all right. So <laughs> chop net is a, is a way to address uh, animated channels, uh, animated parameters, which are called channels, and uh, it's a way to procedurally animate or uh, constrain an animation. And, uh, it's, it's a, a bold, bold move to throw down a chop net in a battle. You yeah. have to yeah to demonstrate your mastery of it. I like, I like everybody's kind of doing these. Everybody's kind of doing, doing these flexes. Chop 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 words are something that not many people know how to use. You can have a lot of uses too, like. Uh, someone, someone made, made uh, uh, videos on how to uh, use MIDI controllers, controllers to control, control what's happening in your, uh, with an uh, OTR asset. asset. And, and you can, can control it with a MIDI controller, controller meaning you just, just turn some knobs. knobs. And, and that's, that's, that comes from really neat. Yeah, that's cool. That'd, That'd be great, great for uh, recording, recording an animation, animation, sort of performing, performing an animation with controls rather than just entering values and keyframes. That's cool. Something that's more natural, because you know, just turn your knobs and uh, usually you get a more natural uh, look. Yeah, I like it very much. Yeah, I think this is neat. And um, the uh, let's see, he's got quite a quite a node network going on. It looks a little bit messy at first glance, but it's actually quite organized. I, I think I can see kind of where he's going with this. And that's the good. animation, maybe it's a maybe it's a spinning animation or a rotation. Uh, maybe I, I'm pretty sure it's actually the way a wave that's actually moving. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, I think the guides are kind of following the the flow as well. I'm not too sure. Oh, maybe they're moving up and down as though they're resting on each of the each of the the wires that's surrounding the planet. Oh man, I think that's really interesting. Actually, I think you might be right. I think it is kind of like. A planetary uh, turntable. <laughs> <laughs> and it just put down a pop net. So let's see if that could add uh, something fun as well. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> let's add some particles to that. <laughs> so maybe we should uh, uh, look at someone else. Uh, probably Chris. There we go. Oh, I have to say, uh, Quinius Maximus in the chat uh, declared uh, that Dave, Dave Stewart is making Planet Rock, Rock which I, I appreciate. I think that's a good call. call. So, so I'm sorry, sorry we're, 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 who are we looking at? Uh, Chris. 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 For sure. So when, when we last left Chris, Chris he was still kind of putting, putting the trumpet together, together and putting the, uh, putting the pyrosim. Looks, looks like he's got his result from the pyrosim. We see the... The, the, the smoke, smoke or the pressure, pressure emerging, emerging from, from the, the trumpet. trumpet. Ooh, too bad. His, uh, his twitch is a bit too uh, difficult to look at. 
This is a key that made the lattice and is trying to deform this character with it. Uh, yeah, it looks like a lattice deformer and then he's jittering the points. Uh, that's, that's so cool. Six minutes. I think he's done that a lot of times. I feel like it's not uh, his, his first time experimenting that, experimenting that. I think, I think that's, that's a great, great way to do it, it though. Put a lattice around your character and then noise the points so that they kind of move randomly with relation to each other, and then your your character ends up sort of wobbling in a really <laughs> grotesque manner. <laughs> I like it. Let's see how he's going to uh, to link the the smoke to it, <laughs> unless he yeah. just wants a single frame. He just right. wants, maybe wants a single frame look. But I'll tell you, we've been doing a few of these battles. This is battle number four, and I think that they've been stepping up each time. I think we're, we're starting to see more animation uh, than we did before, and we're starting to see renders. And, uh, you know, Ooh, speaking of renders, let's do a quick look at uh, John's screen down there. I'm seeing oh. some color. Oh, yeah. Look at that, some, some color, color and light. light. Oh, oh, my goodness. goodness. He, put, uh, he made the uh, robot-looking uh, curves... Uh, uh, emit uh, light. That looks kind of neat. And it's it's like a material on. I like it. It's like oh, a hologram or something. And, and I, I still, still have no idea what those spiky, spiky things are, but... Uh... <laughs> it kind of looks like the uh, thing to clean my uh, bike chain. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the alien bike uh, Houdini battle <laughs> next time. <laughs> It's an alien musical bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's good and looking. I like the colors. I think that's nice, and it's and it's emitting the the color uh, the colored light there is really pretty. Let's look at Nick's screen. Um, see another oh. take on the alien trumpet. Oh yeah. He's, He's got, got it coming, coming together. together. I don't know what it is. I just oh my goodness! Look at that. It's animated, so he's pumping out, pumping out tunes. <laughs> I just think that's great. I don't know what it is about that horn. I just think the form of it is really nice. I think that's a great job. <laughs> it, it reminds me of a snake. I don't know. It's yeah. It's very organic and kind of like coily, and then it's. The, the bits are kind of like pumping through, kind of like a Warner Brothers cartoon. It's like pushing through big areas of lower pressure and higher pressure. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a logo for a program in a way. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like a, like a light wave competitor circa like 1997 or something would have a logo like that. And it There's would be made in Kai's power tools. Three minutes and, and 40 seconds. Oh, we have three minutes left. So should we have a look at everyone quickly? Yeah, coming down to the wire. Uh, so should we have a look at Dave quickly? I oh, yeah, right. he, he put some down some uh, materials, I think, and looks nice. It, and it, uh, I'm pretty sure it's still yeah, it's just the viewport. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I, I think he added some some stars. I think the the particles would make some stars. Is that oh, cool. the particles or are the stars? Okay. Seems I like a, think so. It's, it's a bit difficult to see because of the compression, I think. The compression and the frame rate, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. dense geometry. Now he's showing us the wireframe, and I see the geometry on the planet is quite dense there. I wonder if that's impacting his, uh, his like, editor performance. I know. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's throwing <laughs> those particles off. I don't know. I'll be really interested to see that one. Um, I think we should have a quick look at uh, Chris. Okay. He's putting up uh, his, uh, his light, just to light uh, quickly his uh, character. Oh, and he's got a floor. That's good. So in the belly of some alien starcraft in the uh, <laughs> cavernous recesses is uh, an alien playing the trumpet. And uh, he's putting some, maybe some finishing touches on here. 
Oh, he's putting the color on the on the set. That's good. So he gets the gets the main thing down first, and then starts doing the set dressing, building that out after he's got the main thing done. That's a smart way to do it. Definitely. And I think we should have a, a look at uh, John as well. Yeah. Before we up. Let's see, John. Uh, <laughs> I looks like a robot now. Oh I'm my so goodness! Cool. Look at this. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, I think it's going very... to surround everything. Like the the whole thing is going to be surrounded with this. Ah, oh, looks so uh, nice. Wow, there we are. And he's using the uh, for for those who might not recognize it. That's the Redshift render view. It's similar to the Mantra render view, but specifically for the Redshift render, it gives you a lot of cool options to to uh, do image editing. Hmm. And he's just tweaking his uh, L system uh, to get different looks. Okay, one minute. We're, oh, we're, oh, it's really, minute it's back. really, we're at down to the wire here. Uh, less than a minute. Does everyone know? I hope. I um, don't know if you can tell them. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't even know if they can hear us. <laughs> I think Nick can hear us. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay. One minute. In the, in the 30 score, seconds! But... 30 oh, seconds! Ah. Right, Shisano, so now we're seeing an animated version of Dave's here. He's finally letting us see. Oh, yeah, the pop net is throwing off Ooh, uh, nice. stuff from the middle there. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, five 4. Oh, I forget the rest. Two, one. <laughs> it's over. That's it. Mouse is down. Uh, it's a wrap. Mouse is Congratulations. down. Congratulations. Uh, you guys did an amazing job. You guys did amazing. amazing. This is a tough one. Um, I want to see those mouses so, down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did they all stop? Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. I think uh, even Chris uh, managed so, to, to see that <laughs> with them. So now we're going to review. Dave, we're on your screen. So let's start with you. Uh, talk us through just like a, you know, one minute. Like, uh, what was your thought process? Well, um, I mean. Or what, is, honestly, what are we looking at? <laughs> I, had, I had too many ideas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't, it, one, one of the things that came to mind were those little, uh, essentially the, it's those little um, instruments where you essentially clink them with your fingers, right? Okay. So, it, so the idea of having that being driven by like planetary rings, just, so it's kind of a combination of the idea of like a, uh, a player piano, you know, with the rolls that rotate. Uh huh. So not very well executed because you can't really tell. But again, the idea would be that these grooves are rotating underneath the, uh, you know, the grooves of the uh, of the planetary rings are rotating underneath these these needles or these uh, essentially these devices that pick up those vibrations and then the planet itself is is vibrating to you know to carry the sound waves out or something like that I don't know. That's, that's an incredible thought process in such a oh, small great. amount of time i love it i can somebody kind of hear it said, I, uh, yeah go ahead somebody in the chat said planet rock which yeah, there you go yeah yeah I, yeah it, it makes me want to try something more elaborate now because it's it's given me some other ideas that i definitely can't execute in such a short amount of time so i think um the audio is messing with us again and yeah hold on one second if we have time Sorry, guys. One second, and okay. So, Dave, you don't have to uh, go through that whole thing again. But um, the unfortunately, the audience couldn't hear you. Um, oh, gotcha. but but uh, if they were looking at you at Twitch, if they were watching you on Twitch, I hopefully they heard you. Um, yes, but, I looked um, you there, but. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, the other idea that I had was an orrery, um, which are or like a, a what are the what's the other word for those? Essentially, it's the little planetary uh, visualization devices like these. Uh, so that would have been cool if I had been able to do like a essentially oh, a neat. solar system that essentially the same idea, but the planets themselves were driving the frequencies somehow. So that's that's version two, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, that's great. That'd be neat if you continued it. Um, well, really impressive, um, especially in the last bit, how you threw it all together. I love the particles. Um, very, very cool. Cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, so chops. next. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go to Nick next, but hold on. Let me just double check your audio here. I can, but I just want to make sure your audience can. So hold on one second here. Let me just fix one thing. So cute. <laughs> um, yeah, a little slow, but just bear with me. Almost there. Yeah. Um, okay. I think you can start. So tell us about your alien. Okay. Well, my <laughs> game plan was to try and come up with the dumbest thing I could think of. Because um, I just thought if I try to do something, I don't know, to my normal taste, I would just get bogged down in details and just never get it done on time. So I was like, keep it. I was basically trying to think what would my daughter make um, the whole time. <laughs> So hopefully I succeed in that. Dave, by the way, I mean, Dave's, Dave's is amazing. I mean, that's great you could do that amount of time. But I was just like, no, nah, this is going to be, if I was a, you know, a four-year-old, what would I draw? So <laughs> that's basically was my whole plan. Oh, that's well. great. I, I mean, love that not plan. Much more thought that went into it other than that, really. Um, I went for an alien initially because I couldn't really, uh, heck, because I couldn't really think of an instrument. So I thought, well, I got an alien. At least I got something. Yeah. Um, and then... I did some quick Googling and I saw some interesting piped based instruments. So I was like, well, I could draw a curve and run some noise through it. Um, and then 45 minutes is over. You know, it flies fast. I know. It goes by so fast. And there's some animation on this, right? Uh, yeah. So it's just, it's all procedural. You don't so want the, to show the, it? Uh, can you see it playing back here? It's on Twitch. We can see it on Twitch. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe, can... oh good, good, good. Wait. It must be me oh, yeah, then. Well, don't worry about it. Yeah, cool. Wait a minute. Let me check on so light stream. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you need, do you want to try and scream it on light stream? Oh good. No, no, no. We're fine. We're okay, fine. Yeah. so um it's it's just some light, yeah. It's yeah. just I've just it's got a curve that I'm using to build the very silly trumpet and I've just got so a width that tribute that's just got some noise on it to make it do that. And then with the last few moments I had left, I quickly threw some noise on the mouth. <laughs> it's you know, it's all a bit uh, it's all a little ropey to put it badly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Great job. Okay, next let's talk to John. Right. And if you could unmute yourself. John, do you think you could unmute yourself on my end too? Or... Well, I think on Twitch it's just fine. subsets of the grid and then had um, shapes being like instanced or, or replicated into those regions. So like these quads up here get replaced with these like alien, um, it's like a Tesla coil or some type of like geometric, um, I don't know, some kind of electromagnetic field generator or something like that. Some sci-fi 
<laughs> something sci-fi. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, over here, um, I did kind of just like random subdivisions. So like a quad tree or like a data oct tree or something like that. Um, and replace them with triangles. So I'd like just with time limitation, I figured it made sense to build out this one thing in VEX. Uh, it's just like a kind of shape instancer, or like copy to, to, to quads or copy to grids, essentially. Um, so that put the triangle buttons down at the bottom. Um, and then I did some geo lights with redshift or like mesh lights to get the wild over the top glow. Um, I did that L system here to make this weird like fractal antenna uh, waveform type thing, or it's like some some kind of sacred geometry or something like that. So they have presets on the gear, like you would do different initial settings that give you some some interesting rules to get started with. And again, just with time constraints, uh, that was like the quickest way to, to work or whatever, essentially. So yeah, then I was just rendering with Redshift. Um, I didn't go too, too fancy with things that you could get like post color correction, post production uh, stuff pretty quickly. And then I did a big like fog volume in the scene to get the light kind of scattering around or whatever. Um, yeah, and then that's just pretty much where I ended up for the, the time being. So awesome. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, next is Chris, and I won't be able to hear him, but hopefully you guys will be on your end. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. How do you uh, tell Chris to, to talk about this thing? <laughs> uh, Nick, do you mind uh, since you have a yeah. direct line okay. to him? Or... And hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Um, but yeah, so basically. I, I like my plan going in was just like, what are the things that I can do the fastest? Um, and uh, can you can you can, can you guys hear me? I don't know. Yes. Uh, I think yeah. Uh, I'm talking on Twitch. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. There's just a delay. Nice. Um, anyway, all right. I'll I'll keep talking now. So, uh, and just assume you guys can hear me. So yeah, I was just like, what can I do the fastest? I wrote down some ideas. I can pull up this like Google doc that I made. Um, I forget what exactly the ideas were, um, but I think it was, yeah. Uh, I wanted to do world, world space noise. Um, oh shit, hold on. Uh, I just heard John talking about me in the background. Um, Okay, yeah, world space noise, jungle, uh, jiggle, jiggle, truncated movement, and like explosion in the, in the background with like one of the shelf tools. But anyway, yeah, my idea was like because Houdini has these great, like really quickly, quick to set up new soft level um, pyro and vellum and all those tools. I love using those because I can get like dynamics really quick, um, and I love also making characters, which I I have been for, throughout Kulai using like a lot of curves and VDBs together for. So this is like a perfect example of just using curves and VDBs. I use some of my own HDAs that I can share, including VDB from Curve and a VDB Dent, which is um, just like a VDB Boolean denting thing that Antagma made a tutorial on a long time ago, but I just like wrapped it up into one HDA and you can see it kind of is there for the eyelids and stuff. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, I had this guy playing a trumpet and then at the end, I like added in, um, I added in, uh, if we go, oh, I think it's actually still flip booking. So we have a lot of extra frames, but um, it's, uh, I, I use a lattice and then I just like put noise on a lattice. So it wouldn't be like too, I don't know, like frequent noise, I guess. Um, I guess I could have just adjust the frequency. I don't know if that was the best idea. But um, I did that, and then, oh my god, my uni is like freaking out. Um, I did that, and then, uh, you know, the lattice was moving. Oh, I, need, I think I need to turn off um, my simulation. 
the lattice was moving like this, you can see, and then these legs got kind of screwed up. So the way you can always fix that stuff really easily, like weird deformations like that, is with a delta mush. Which is like a lot of delta <laughs> mush! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> based on like a rest pose um and so yeah i use that all the time and it like made this not look so bad basically um and then yeah just had some lights and you know other fun stuff but uh yeah just thought of like what is the quickest stuff i can do made some some silly curves and made some hands playing the instruments and yeah if i had, had more time i would have properly set it up with like noise going across the curve or like a point to form with like a sim on the curves or something like that kind of like uh, nick did but um but yeah anyway a lot of fun thank you guys for having me sorry oh that's so great Very thanks cool. for thanks for joining thanks for joining everybody um okay it's now time to vote and there is a simple poll um on the general area general <laughs> channel so time for voting, everybody. Vote, vote, um, vote. Uh, votes are still coming in, so not quite ready to announce it yet. But mm. super great, super great. So exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's neat to... to to like the thoughts that you got like your um thought process in this short amount of time like you were saying dave like your decision um anxiety that you were having is that how you put it <laughs> yeah to put it lightly <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no that's fascinating and i really wanted to build up an instrument that actually generated sound so that's going to be my project to, to evolve this into, into have something you worked that... with uh, andrew lowell's uh, music toolkit yet? I, ha I have it installed i just haven't actually had time to, act to start building something with it yet so oh, it's, on, it's on my list and it's up high on my list <laughs> oh yeah i think you're gonna love it it looks really cool yeah I'm pretty sure Andrew would love to see some people come up with ideas with his tool set, yes. Oh, yeah, in the um, battle. That'd be cool to have a battle with that in there. I want to try to figure out a setup where I can take my, my digital piano, run MIDI data from that uh, into Houdini, uh, and generate animation with that, then run it through Andrew's tools with secondary, uh, like a secondary sim or something like that, and like create this crazy feedback loop and just build and build and build on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, votes so, are still coming in. People are really struggling because they like everyone's. <laughs> they don't know what to do. <laughs> also, the Maria just put out a, a tutorial on MIDI Houdini modeling with a MIDI device, and I was just wondering how those two could be used together. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could you could actually create a, a sort of a performance capture setup with those potentially. Yeah, and then like Chris could real time his characters with a MIDI device. Yeah. <laughs> and drive the lattice deformer so that his alien is dancing to the, to the tune. Yeah, and how come we have we don't have holograms yet? That'd be fun to like do a MIDI hologram in the middle of a room or something. <laughs> Okay, I think the voting has settled down and we have a tie between. I have a tie? Yeah, well, it's not surprising. Uh, we have a tie between John and Chris. Oh, <laughs> it changed again. Uh, yeah, and you guys can, everybody uh, can oh, see the. <laughs> what was that? Like, John is up uh, by two right now. By three. Oh, wait a second. Sorry, I guess I, the squatters, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I should hold off a sec. <laughs> of course, people are going to, to vote for Chris now. <laughs> it's really close. It was uh, on the last battle as well. And I think we ended up with a tie last time. 
Uh, yep, it's tied up again. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at, the, at that point, it's it's just a tie, right? Because it just will like keep going like that. Countdown. I, <laughs> count down. Go for it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps going between uh, John and Chris. I think I think we can call it a tie. Let's just call it a tie. I think. Yeah. It's, uh, I think fair. we can. I think we could call it a tie. Well, congratulations <laughs> to the winners. Thank you so Great much job, for your participation. Guys, awesome. Thank you, and thanks for all your patience with the tech issues. I swear I will get this right one of these <laughs> battles. <laughs> um, but you know, we're still this is still in the the, the early days. So uh, again, thank you for I know you were so busy. So um, awesome. So uh, we'll see you guys on Discord. Everyone is thanking you and giving you good kudos. So thanks uh, to all the competitors. It was a real pleasure to watch you guys work. So thanks so much for for coming by. Yeah. Interesting ideas. Thanks for having me. That was uh, that was a, a trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the the pressure was good. Was that? Oh good? yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. always <was> interesting. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next time. See you at the next battle. Alrighty. Sounds good. Okay. Bye, everybody. Sarah. Bye. Thanks for Bye. joining Cheers. us. <laughs> Cheers.